You're with Julian on the brown note and America's Hitler moment. And people say anytime you mention the Nazis, you've lost the argument. But in the context of what's happening in America, and if you're listening live on Tuesday, in 24 hours, we'll have an election result in America that will change the course of history, potentially change the course of the Western world in a very bad way. Uh, I already put my pick of the winner online and on this show uh, back in August. And I'll mention more of that later in the show. But sometimes those parallels are valid and they are valid now. And you can only go back to Hitler's 1933 election victory, which was no massive victory at all. And compare the characterization of Donald Trump with various fascists throughout the years but most potently Germany wasn't a backwater Germany was literally the most educated country in the world per capita in 1933 they were also the most liberal art house country on earth the whole Berlin scene was the vanguard of provocative provocative art sex and you know deviancy and so on they were also the biggest economy in europe so here you have this economic powerhouse probably in the world's top three economies with the most literate public and hitler got in and people say about apathy and i've said the number one deciding factor in this american election is democratic voter apathy which is why I said that Joe Biden had to go just before he actually did. I don't know if he heard me. They've already, you cannot reason with these people, you have to outnumber them. And that has been the case with action on climate change, action on virtually anything. They have already dismissed all of the evidence and replaced it with their own. You can only outnumber them, which is why I said that when Joe Biden was increasingly decrepit and the heart and the passion had gone out of the democratic voting base why he had to go because they weren't going to outnumber the rusted on donald trump voters they're not going to change their mind but as we saw at the last election they can be outnumbered by eight million people so that was the thing that will decide it but a lot of people say you know in germany they were just apathetic they weren't the federal election held in March 1933, uh, which, you know, months later, about eight months later, the, the Nazis just seized power. That was prefaced by Nazi stormtroopers unleashing a widespread campaign of violence against opposition. Now, we haven't seen that so much, but we have seen violent rhetoric against opposition continually from the last eight years from the Trump campaign. The Nazis didn't win that election with a majority. Uh, in the months before the 1933 election, the SS displayed terror, repression and propaganda across the land and Nazi organizations monitored the vote process. Now, the way that Hitler pressurized the media and the actual voting process has direct parallels to what's happening with Trump. They already, and this is a danger about a potential civil war in America, is they have learned from the last election to have try and, in places like Georgia, they've tried to actually control the voting process, to have people in place already this time, instead of being bullied by Trump, they're already there to deny the results. In Prussia, 50,000 members of the SS were ordered to monitor the votes, acting on the instructions of Hermann Goering. The Nazi party failed to win an absolute majority in this last free election. Uh, it did, however, register a large increase in votes and gained a Reichstag majority with its coalition partner, this was the first time since 1930 a governing coalition had held a parliamentary majority. However, despite waging a campaign of terror against their opponents, 
The Nazis only tallied 43.9% of the vote, well short of a majority to govern alone. So they then, eight months later, cancelled democracy and outlawed the opposition parties. These are parallels that cannot be ignored. The fact that they might, when jo Donald Trump won in uh, 2016, he lost the popular vote by 3 million votes. It came down to three swing states that had been largely targeted by people like Cambridge Analytica, who targeted 300,000 votes in those three states, and 60,000 votes out of about, you know, however, but tens and tens of, like nearly 100 million votes, 60,000 votes would have swung that election against him. Now, this time he's got, he's, he's got the experience to understand and we've seen with Project 2025, which all of the, the Trump supporters laugh about and pretend isn't real, despite it being very, very heavily documented online, exactly what they intend to do to the judiciary, to the media and to you know their political opponents are direct parallels to what Hitler did. Hitler didn't start World War II when he won in 1933. That was years later. And the Western world were pliant in supporting his position. So we've got a media now that doesn't hold him to account anywhere near as much as they should. So it wasn't apathy because he didn't even win a majority despite violently bullying the electorate. There was a massive anti-Nazi movement in Ger Germany at the time. And there was also massive pro-Nazi movements in the places like America. One of the great problems and one of the greatest villains of this whole story are the media and polling companies. They're selling a product and I never forget the, I think it was the chairman of CBS when Trump won in 2016 saying, Trump is terrible for America, but great for business. They sell product based on him and they sell product based on claiming that there's a very tight race and that there's uh, continual changes in the likelihood of who's going to win. And it's the same for polling companies. That's how they sell their wares. But it's very damaging and danger dangerous to democracy. And no one, you know, the, no one thought it could happen. But it happened already. So we, you know, we've got... Imagine if Hitler had got voted out at the next election. And, the, you know was allowed to stand again in 1939. The attacks on the media are so like what Hitler did at the time. The media was shut down. The attacks on political opponents were exactly what Trump intends to do. He's already said that he will do it out loud. And the other side of it is no one expects Donald Trump to send millions of people to gas chambers. But the Nazi rhetoric around definition of citizenship and the other is very apparent in the use of Latin Americans. I'm going to deport 10 million Latin Americans as soon as I get into power. It's the definition of who is an American, which is a white American, a white conservative American. He even trashes Jews that vote Democrat. He defines the country by race. And then there's the attack on the judiciary and the people that monitor and count votes, who often complain that they receive death threats daily and that they're terrified. Because the, own, the inference from the Trump side is that we will make sure your life is hell if you give us the wrong result. And the judiciary from the Supreme Court down has been continually stacked. Trump's already shown us who he is. He showed us who he was before he was elected. And the other side of it is we will have a Trump that isn't Adolf Hitler, but a Trump at the end of his life who is already demonstrating senility. We will have a Trump who is already on trial for multiple offences, including, and I cannot believe that the American Constitution allows somebody currently on trial 
for trying to overthrow the democratic government of America to actually stand in a position of becoming leader of the country and absolving themselves of their own crimes. How that is allowed to happen must change. So it's by the repeat on Thursday, this is going to be a moot point one way or the other. But it's America's Hitler moment and it has ramifications throughout the Western world and the likely, you know, hastening of the end of the Western Empire with the BRIC nations now probably the biggest economic bloc on earth with uh, China, Russia, Brazil, India and many more countries joining them. It's going to, and for Australia, you know, it's going to put us as minnows in a very hard place because the exceptionalism that Trump wants to push through economically is to basically block any uh, foreign goods being sold to America, the biggest market on earth. But the impact of his winning would be a catastrophe likely to lead to a civil war in the world's most powerful nation.